Hey everyone, welcome to episode 6 of my SQLized tutorial series, where in this video we're going to be going over more finder methods and options that you can pass to them. So finder methods are methods that generate select queries. For example, in the previous video we went over find all, which is a select query that selects everything from the table unless restricted by a where clause. In other words, it is equal to select all from users. These finder methods return instances of the model class as opposed to plain JavaScript objects. This basically means that SQLizer wraps everything in instance objects, or instance of the model. This is why in the previous videos we were able to use to JSON on the object return from the find query. This essentially converts the returned instance to a regular JavaScript object where we can access its properties. Also as a note, so for example you could not use to JSON on a regular job JavaScript object. So if you had const wit code equal to soccer, yes something like this, and then we did like wit code dot to JSON, that would throw an error. So to JSON is because they are an instance of the model, which essentially means row or many rows or something like that. However though, something we can pass to our finder method instead of using to JSON is the option raw. So here we have user dot find all. This is another option we can pass and just set it to true because what this will do is essentially the same as passing to JSON, dot to JSON. So let's run this real quick. Do node index.js. See what we have in here. I believe we only have two users right now because I accidentally deleted them all, but yeah, we have two right here and it doesn't show their extra information. So if we just had to find all like this and ran this, you see we get all the extra information that's messy. And then just to show you this with a um, the where clause, we could just do, uh, let's find all where, let's do the age is equal to 25. And then if we wanted to pass raw along with a where, we would just do raw like this and then true. So let's um, run this. You can see we only get one user where their age is 25. And next I want to show you other finder methods or other find methods. Let me make this a bit smaller. And the first is find by pk, which means find a single row in the table from the provided primary key. And will of course only be one row because you know primary key um, is used to specify or uniquely identify one row in your table. So let's do, instead of find all, we will do find by pk or by primary key. And the primary key, user ID 27, another one up here was 28. So let's get username oldie here. So we'll do find my pk 28. What's going on here? We just have that and then we'll log data, but let's do dot to JSON in this one. Run that. And you can see we have retrieved this user by their primary key. And then another find method we can use to return one row is the find one method. So instead of saying find by fk, we'll just do find one. And then instead of passing this um, a primary key, we can either pass it nothing or a where clause and it will return the first row that matches the provided condition. So this will just return the first row that it finds in our table. So we return this. The first one, 27. Last, if you remember, we retrieved user ID 28. So retrieve the first row, which is 27, because that comes before 28. So basically, if we don't pass a condition, it will just return the first row in the table. But we could, of course, do something like where, as we've been doing previously, specify age or something like that. But let's just go back to this, like, like that. So let's actually pass a condition to this uh, find one method. Let's find a row where the age is less than 25 or equal to null. This is just also more good practice for you to get these down. So we want to find the age column. And then of course, because we want to find less than 25 or equal to null, we will use op dot or, because remember the default is and, and then we want to specify if it's less than 25, so less than 25, or it's equal, so op dot equal to null. And I still think I need to add more users to our table, because if we go in here and we do from user right here, we only have two records, because in the Two videos ago, I believe I accidentally did a destroy and removed all the <laughs> users from the table, so I'll probably need to insert more at some point. But let's just um, run this as it is. 
Let's see what we get. So node in Next.js. To JSON of null. So this is probably because this returns an array. Let's do data like this. Null. Oh, so it's because it's not returning anything. So the age is less than 25. Because what do we have in here? We have 25 and 87. Let's do age is less than 28. How about that? There we go. Okay. And then to JSON. So this is just another complicated query. Oh, there you go. Just another complicated query. You can also see how find one is implemented with the limit one here. So it's essentially just running this SQL query and tagging on limit one. And then the next find method we're going to be going over is find or create. And what this method does is create a row in our table if it can't find the one that fulfills our query. Either way, it will return an instance that is either the found instance or the created instance. And this is actually good because we don't have a lot of data in our table. So let's go up here and instead of find one, we'll do find or create. And then let's do one, let's find or create where the username is equal to pizza guy or something like that. So let's do this. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I ran the wrong program. So instead of that, yeah, we want to run node index.js. What is this? Oh, we're messing the validation. What was our validation between four and six? So let's just do pizza. I need to change that validation, but um, now what's happened? Data.toJSON is not a function. So, and let's just do this. and we get the record created. So, so this method um, also, I should let you know, just only returns um, one, one, uh, one field by tagging on the limit one to the SQL query. However, we can also, so we created a row that didn't exist. So because pizza did not exist in here, if we select all from here, um, it inserted pizza. But if we say we logged um, something that already existed, so pizza already exists now, let's do this, it won't in actually insert pizza because it's already there. So because it's already found it, it just leaves it there. And so also something to mention is when we inserted pizza in here, so this here, it inserted the um, defaults for the fields that we set in our table definition. So like default value to true, default value for a uh, wicked rocks, default value to 21 for age and things like that. But we can also set the defaults that we want for that specific created user inside our find or create function by using the key defaults. So in here, let me just actually start this on a new line to clean things up. If we, we can also specify another key here called defaults and pass it an object and say we don't want the default age to be 21. We instead want it to be, um, I don't know, 20, let's do 76 or something like that. So now let's insert, or actually we need to use a username that doesn't exist, let's do T-O-M-M. -M. So Tom with an extra M. Let's do this. It's inserted the user. Let's double check. Tom and the age is 76. So it didn't default to 21 as it did previously. And so of course this here, these defaults will only be applied um, if the username right here wasn't found or if we didn't actually return something. So now let's change this to like 37 and if we run this again, um, let's go in here, select all. You can see it's still 76 because it just returned the instance. So it just returned this user because it actually found it. It did not actually create it. And so of course you can see that if we have a default value in our table creation, like here 21, but we specify one here in the um, creation here in our defaults, the defaults object here will override the one in table creation. Now more on this method, uh, the find or create method actually returns more than just the returned instance from our model. It also returns a boolean that indicates whether the instance was created or already exists. So it basically returns an array containing the instance found and a boolean. For example, if what we were looking for was not found in the database, that means it was inserted and thus boolean would be true and returned along with the instance that was inserted. If the instance was already there, then it will return the found instance along with the false boolean which is why when we were logging data down here.to json, we were not actually, we were getting all that error. So 
let's try, let's do object deconstruction that we did in the previous videos. We'll have result and created. And we can set that equal to data. And then let's log, uh, wow, butchered that. Let's log created. So let's see, we have username, TOMM. And so if we log created, you can see that it was false because the user was not created because they already exist. On the other hand, if we do TOMY, which is user that doesn't exist, and we run this, you can see we get returned true. And then the final method I want to go over is find and count all. And this method combines find all and count. So instead of find or create, we can do find all or find and count all like this. And so as I said, this method return combines find all and count. So in other words, it finds everything that matches your query and also returns a number of how many rows were returned. So let's say Let's pass in an object here, and let's do where username is wit code, and then let's also pass in raw to be true, as you saw earlier, so we don't have to use .tjson. And then in here, what it returns is an object with two properties. So instead of an array, it's an object, and let's pass in count and rows. And so, this, so, of course, these keys have to match up because we are doing object deconstruction. And count is the total number of records matching the query, and rows is an array of the objects um, representing the returned records or rows from the table. So we can log, first let's just log count, and then we can also log rows like this. And let's see what we get in here. So we got zero um, rows where the username is wit code. Let me double check, is that actually true? Yeah, we have Witco because that was too long. So let's do one that, because of our validation, let's do one where it's shorter. So we get one here. So we got one total row, total amount of one row returned, and then the actual row itself, or an array of the rows, which is only one, and it's Witco, which is this row right here. But so this is my video on uh, finder methods, or more finder methods with SQLize. Um, in the next video, we're going to be starting to go over um, setters and getters, which is where I believe things are starting to get more interesting. But um, besides that, thank you for watching, and I guess I'll see you in the next video.